I call Sue Moroni. I thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, great to have an opportunity to rise and speak about the title and commencement clauses in the Support for Children and Hardship Bill. I do intend to mostly talk about the title. Um, I hope to get an opportunity to also talk about the commencement date, but we'll see how we go, because I've got quite a bit to say about the title. Because, Mr Chair, I, I want to tell you what I really don't like about this title of this bill. Support for Children and Hardship Bill, it is far too accepting, in my view, that in a country like New Zealand that we will have children who live in hardship, and that all we really need to do is just support them. And I don't like that concept at all, and neither does the Labour Party, because the Labour Party has said zero tolerance to child poverty. And that's the sort of ambition that you would want from a government, is to actually say it's not acceptable that children live in hardship or in poverty, rather than actually title a bill that actually is very accepting of the very idea that in Aotearoa, New Zealand, the sort of country where we produce food, you know, where, where actually the living standards were once very good right across the board, that today the government accepts the title that they have specifically named a piece of legislation, support for Children in Hardship Bill. That will become the Support for Children in Hardship Act. That will be on our books for a very long time in terms of our legislature, Mr Chair. And I feel offended by that as a New Zealander. If that government still had the ambition it once said it had for New Zealand, it would never think of naming a bill with this sort of title. A bill that accepts that in this country children will live in hardship and that the government's only real role in that is to fling them a bit of support. Well, what is that bit of support that they're flinging them in this bill? Turns out to be about $17, maybe $23.10 hey. at the outmost, per family. Per family. And we've already heard a number of speakers talk about how the, the government has kind of gone into poverty denial on this, that they, um, even though we know that there are 305,000 children now in this food producing nation of ours living in poverty, that the government lacks ambition so much in this area that it's only decided that it will try and address the 18,000 of the uh, most worst off families. Why I raise that is because if the government really understands poverty and knows the depth of this poverty, it surely knows that adding $17 a week per family, maybe $23.10 per, per week for each of these families at the most, that that is not going to fundamentally change the problem for those children. In fact, statistically, not one of those children will be lifted out of poverty with this addition. Not one of those children. Because these families living in, as the government calls it in the title of this bill, hardship, are living in the most extreme end of hardship in this country. And it's completely unacceptable, and it should not be recognised in a name of a bill. If this government was truly ambitious for New Zealand, and wanted to address this issue, then it would be addressing the fundamental causes of poverty. It would be addressing the lack of wealth distribution that we have in this country now under that government. It would be addressing the fact that two out of five of these children live in homes where their parents are in paid employment. Where their parents are in paid employment. And that that paid employment is such a, is, uh, has such appalling conditions and wages that go alongside it that their children live in poverty, even though they are out earning wages. Because these are the families on the zero-hour contracts that that government um, wants to codify in law. These are the families that have been forced to choose, well, not choose, they've been told they can't get the benefit after their child turns a certain um, age, uh, three, and that they must take whatever work is offered to them. That, Mr Chair, is putting these families, putting these children in hardship, as this bill um, names it. 
If that government was ambitious, they would have a better title for this bill. Mr Chair? Sue Moroni. Mr Chair, um, thank you. I, I did at the outset indicate that I wanted to address the commencement, um, but uh, I did warn that I had rather a lot to say about the title. I will now move on um, briefly and address the commencement part of, of this bill. Because again, it shows a government that lacks ambition. A government that uh, lacks such urgency over this issue that it it uh, actually announced in its budget last year, in May last year, uh, sorry, May this year, so uh, many months ago now, that it was going to bring this measure in. That measure should have been taken urgently, not waiting until the 1st of April 2016 before any family could get any benefit of it. If they truly understood the depth of the urgency of the need of these families, then they would have been acting an awful lot earlier. Mr Chair, we're about to move into the most expensive uh, period of time for families. We're moving into the Christmas festive season. For many families, that is the most expensive time of year. And yet here we are on the 1st of December, when this government could have moved much more urgently to address this issue, and given these families a little bit to come and go on over the, the so-called festive season, won't be terribly festive for these families, I can tell you. But that's, if they were truly committed to the urgency of this, then we would be actually talking about a 1st of December, today's date, introducing this additional payment, because we've got Christmas coming up, we've got the holiday season coming up, we've got the school year about to start next year, the cost of uniforms, the cost of school fees, the cost of stationery, all of those things that impact upon families and make it extremely difficult for these so-called children in hardship to participate fully in their education. Mr Chair, um, I'm going to uh, wrap up my contribution there. I think it's extremely disappointing that the government um, lacks so much ambition for New Zealand that it accepts that there will be children in hardship in Aotearoa and it accepts that it hasn't got, uh, it's not terribly urgent to do anything about it.